Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake 2. I'm Burning Dog Face, and we're back here in the main menu, looking at this ominous-ass typewriter. Because I like to start the second session of any Let's Play by showing you guys exactly what happens when I load the game, because until we've done it once, you can never be sure. And I know I just called it out at the end of the last session, but I like to do it anyway, so... Oh god, I wish I wouldn't do that. Um... Yeah, got a lot of positive comments. People are really excited about this one. I'm happy about that. Shout out to Rachel Starwin, who I haven't heard from in forever, who loved a comment saying, I rise from the grave to find BDF playing Alan Wake 2. What a treat for the spooky season. So, you know, shout out for that. And uh, shout out to Roshin, who says, I think due to YouTube being YouTube, it just might be better to turn on that sensor. So I'm mentioning this because, yes, I did, in fact, come in and switch the nudity sensor on for the uh, future. Roshin is up to 962 days of commenting on my videos in order to encourage the YouTube algorithm. So thank you for that. Closing in on the big four digits. So, uh, that's about enough yammering. Let's hit continue. Oh, I no. That manuscript page out of my head. Okay, it is at the beginning of the thing. Oh, and it's fucking up the timing again. I've never seen killers reach out so directly before. Damn impressive work so far. With your technique. Well, I'll mention there that Alex Casey, fast. like Max Payne before I him. I'm not sure about taking a case so far from home, but I'm thrilled to be here for this mystery. I wouldn't even make it to the end of the conversation this time. Yeah, Alex Can Casey has the, the face of Sam Lake. No, I'm all set. The lead creative guy anyway. at a Remedy. I want to walk to the diner, get a feel for the town. And the voice of James McCaffrey. Who, uh, appeared in Control as the voice of former FBC director Zachariah Trench. Whereas, the diner's uh, just up the waterfront. Shouldn't keep the sheriff and our witnesses waiting. I smell coffee. I mean, there are guys giving it away right there. But, uh, yes, yeah, we haven't seen a lot of him yet, but I will mention that uh, Alan Wake is uh, a combination of the appearance, the physical appearance, of uh, Finnish actor Ilka Vili and the voice of American voice actor Matthew Poretta. Uh, they repri in addition to the two of them reprising the role of Alan Wake, in control and uh, as a you know a cameo in that game as and as a major focus of the DLC chapter A W E, uh, Poretta also appeared rather uh, consistently in Control uh, as live action character Doctor Casper Darling. So you know that's exciting. I guess I will just go ahead and. Uh... I'm actually going to turn the camera off and go to the, to the end of the street because I don't want to just skip everything in case it p pays attention to what I'm paying attention to. So, uh, jump cut. Because of the date this is going up on, I just wanted to take advantage of this jump cut and wish all of you fine Burning Dog fans a very happy Halloween. Here's hoping the spookiest day is going well for you. Actually, there is something I can comment on right here, because I, uh... Got a comment from, uh, Justin Jones, a viewer of mine who is legally blind, and likes to watch, uh, Let's Play- or listen to Let's Play videos, sorry, to, uh, live vicariously through the players. Uh, Justin asks, How different is the Mind Place's aesthetics from the physical game world? Does it look like a regular office, or is the lighting different? Something else? And, uh, if I could just pop over here, let's see. I do note that uh, Saga is no longer wearing her FBI jacket, but she is still wearing the same uh, slightly out-of-season Christmas sweater. The Mind Place just looks like a regular office. Like a totally ordinary wood-paneled office, except that all of the windows have nothing outside of them, it seems, except vague shapes of light floating in darkness. It's like there's a lamppost just out there, except I can't actually see anything except the light. It's very dark out there. I got the impression from stuff that Saga said that this is specifically the local uh, FBI field office that she constructs the mind place anew every time she gets an investigation. I guess in order to ground herself in the local area? 
I don't know. Let's go have a chat with these coffee guys. How much coffee have you had today, Charlie? <laughs> Charlie's living the dream. Oh, Justin goes on to say, uh, I am assuming that the game provides context clues for when there is an object of interest, e.g. the lunchboxes. Uh, when I'm looking at something I can interact with from a distance, I can see a little dot over it, and if I look directly at it, the dot turns into an A prompt. And it seems that in the, uh, the mind place, I can just interact with any of these things from anywhere in the room, but normally I do have to walk right up to them before it turns into an A prompt. Uh, also says, audio design seems very good so far. I noticed that there isn't much in the way of ambient music, great for building suspense. I appreciate it when game developers are considerate of people that like to record Let's Plays of their games. I think that Falcom has a fairly liberal policy with their music. And Sorry about that. And P.S. Coffee is what makes the world go round. Right, Charlie? Hey, this looks like a map right here. It's just across from those guys. Oh, good! I didn't get that last time. Let's see... That loaded in. Elderwood Palace Lodge, yes. Uh, Clay's Clam House, Odier Diner. Conversation neutral- oh my god, it's actually marking it off like a thing in an open world map. Drehen Tools and Hardware, home of the annual Deer Fest! Well, Deer Bright Falls is the home, not Drehen Hardware. That would be weird. Valhalla Nursing Home! Well, that's very suggestive to me. I listened to the guys talking about the float, listened to the thermoses talking about coffee. Welcome to Bright Falls. Oh, and as I was uh, heading over here, I heard Alex on the radio just say, Oh dear, cute. And then Saga said nothing to that, which it's I liked. Nice to have you here. I got this time, I noticed looking in the background here that several of the blurry names on the jukebox are uh, songs from Old Gods of Asgard. I remember Take Control. This is a part of the job. I don't remember Alone at My Own Wake. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, I think I'm all about caught up there. Hmm. Very ominous. to make the fact that they're hiding things from me. But at the same time, I'd be pretty freaked out too, and I don't know how open I would be if I had seen that. Uh, shout out to Derek Floyd, who says, I think Nightingale was out of the FBI well before he came to Bright Falls. He didn't act like a proper FBI agent, and he didn't have his service pistol. In 2010, the FBI... I really like the, like the level of detail in this comment, by the way. In 2010, the FBI service pistol was the Glock 22, a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson, uh, while Nightingale was waving around a Colt Python, a 357 Magnum. Uh, the current service pistol is the Glock 17... Uh, Glock 17M, sorry, which is a 9mm Parabellum, so Casey and Anderson should have Glocks if they're authentic FBI. If they don't, then we might be in Alan's story. I like that a lot. Oh, and uh, shout out to Clunk279, who A, was pleasantly surprised with this Let's Play, because he hadn't heard that the game was actually out yet, and B, left a comment on the subject of Charlie and Charlene out in the street, saying, I'm glad it's not summer in Bright Falls. I know people who had to wear mascot costumes like the Thermos ones here, and let me tell you, those things are absolute hell in summer heat. I believe you. Ooh, I think you found something. So you found something there, right? A necklace these cultists may have dropped. Okay. Wow. How did you put that? See? It's, it's not just me. It's weird. You need to hand it over. She's like, getting psychic impressions or some shit. I told you not to keep that thing to me. Wait a minute. Did I see that symbol in control? Thanks. This could prove to be helpful. Do me a favor. Stick around town for now in case we Rose. have Rose! <laughs> like we'd even dream of missing dear Oh, God. Saga! Saga Anderson. As I live and breathe. I thought 
we'd never see you back here after that awful, awful thing happened to your baby girl. Uh. How are you? Um, I'm sorry. Who are you? I don't know what you're talking about. It's me, silly. Rose. You know me. I don't think I do. And what horrible thing happened to my baby girl? She drowned. Your daughter. She sounded pretty alive on the phone yesterday. That's so weird. Or earlier today. Remember. How do you know I have a daughter? Oh, I know what this is. You're blocking out your traumatic memories. Happens on TV all the time. No. You're mistaking me for someone else. If you say so. I don't love that. How is Rose even sane after what happened to her? She was possessed, and I thought she was taken the first time. I... Cult necklace. Well, before I do that, I'm of course going to walk into the uh, ominous fucking hallway over here. This is where Alan ran into Barbara Jagger for the first time, who started the entire plot in motion. Now, she's been utterly destroyed as, a, as an avatar of the Dark Presence, but it's still around. And uh, this hallway is darker than it ever was. Oh, this flashlight sucks. Oh, that's better. Coffee World, America's top coffee attraction. Enjoy thrilling rides. Uh, play exciting games. Drink full-bodied coffee. Meet the one and only Micra... Oh, Mocha Moose. Of course, of course. 25 bucks for adults, 15 bucks for children. It's for the whole... It's fun for the whole family. <laughs> this is very silly. Where the fun is percolating. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I was kind of expecting Alan to be standing at the end of the hallway. It's not like... It's all that clearly didn't know who he was. So it's not like she'd recognize him. Can't open this with my bare hands. Amazingly, the key for the, uh, the fence didn't open this. Oh, I really didn't want that to work. Nothing good ever happens in horror games and bathrooms. That's going to the... Oh, I guess it's bright. Yeah, unisex. Fine. Oh, I don't love that there's a wet floor in here. Uh-oh, did you forget to wash your hands? Oh no, that's actually, that's actually like, good advice. Turn on the faucet, not too hot. Soap, uh, rub-a-dub-dub -dub at least 20 seconds. Yeah, they, they had a bunch of posters like this around after the, uh, the pandemic. Oh man, if Alan gets out, we're gonna have to explain COVID to him. Employees only? It's not opening. Tense up. It might be coming from behind. Nope, 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 nope. No, no, I just really remembered. Uh, Casey definitely knows uh, Saga's daughter because he said, <sighs> smart ass kid. And she said to uh, that he should stop being gloomy. Okay, okay, what if, what if that's what happened to Saga the first time through in the original, real timeline, and this Saga is the one that has been modified by Alan's story? Maybe Rose can see how, what she was supposed to be, because her head is messed up with creative energy, too. How exactly do we know each other? So, Rose, help me out. How do you think we know each other? We all know each other around here. It's been a while, but I never forget a face. Or a coffee order. Never Guess been to this I just have before. one of those faces. Seen anything strange around town? Seen anything out of the ordinary in town lately? Suspicious people in deer masks? No one's suspicious. But soon enough, there'll be lots of happy people wearing deer masks for Deerfest. 
Great. Practically everyone will be wearing one. Great! That's fantastic news. I'm really glad to hear that. By the way, I look, yeah, it says 81st Annual Deer Fest. Uh, the laws of math work out. I checked it. And uh, the screenshots from uh, Alan Wake 1 do in fact say the 68th Annual Deer Fest. So, hey. All set. My guys have Nightingale at the morgue if you're ready to go take a look. Let's go. Because even that would be cheerier than pondering well, Casey, that. I got a lead. Looks like we're dealing with a cult. The cult of the tree. A murder cult. Fuck. Right? Have you heard of this cult of the tree, Sheriff? Only the urban legend. You're not the guy I was thinking of. The cult will get you. That sort of thing. Oh boy. We're not gonna find out you're the Grand Wizard or something, are we? I played some D&D back in the day. Wizard was always my favorite class. Morning, Sheriff! For the record, I don't think he should have used Grand Wizard, because I'm pretty sure that's the title of the leader of the KKK. Looks like you have some guests! Ah, uh, morning, Ted. Yeah, real important guests. Deerfest. Always draws a crowd, right? <laughs> Too true! More the merrier. Have a good one, Sheriff. Who else to keep this city clean if not I? Who else to protect its citizens from the dangers of unsanitary conditions? This fucking Dan Castellaneta looking guy. What do you think that's about, Marge? I bet they're looking Trash, at Trash, garbage, refuse, else. call it what There's you will. I will make it My disappear. My cost Keller Brothers. Maybe. You know, for a second when I saw that guy sweeping the uh, parking lot, for just a second, I uh, thought it was Ati from Control. The world may be drowning nope. in its own waste, but not this town. Oh, for God's sake. This is not this fucking place, man. Guarding the streets, keeping them safe. Keeping them hey, what do you know about that waitress from the diner? <laughs> Rose? Yeah, she's a bit of a space case. Always has been. Always? Why? What she do now? She kept saying that my daughter drowned. She even knew my name. It was all very weird. Rose has a talent for saying the weirdest thing possible. But it's best not to take it personally. I swear to God, if that little girl drowns before the end of the game, I'm gonna... I don't think I can say it. <laughs> oh, we're just real time. I thought we were gonna get in a car or something. Corpse is downstairs, ready to go. What a cheery man. All prep. I'd like to take a closer look as soon as possible. Lead the way, Sheriff. Oh, this is the Bright Falls Sheriff Station. Anything you need, just uh, let us know. We oh, appreciate the support, Sheriff. I remember this. This is the same layout from right 2010. You, sir. Yep, yep. Just here to pay my ticket. Whenever you're ready to take right. Yeah, that was the room of the, the fish the doctor who just come from fishing took an examination of Alan after he hit his head. And that w this middle desk is where uh, Barry was making calls to uh, give that message that Sheriff Sarah Breaker gave everyone. Sorry, I had to take a moment to look it up. Uh, shout out to Derek Floyd again, who says that, you know, I mentioned Ati from Control. Well, apparently Marty Suasolo is in the credits for this game. So either Ati is in this game, or someone who looks or sounds suspiciously like Ati is in this game. <laughs> you know, good to know. Good to know. He did say at the end of Control that he was going on vacation to Watery, which is the town next to Bright Falls. In fact, I think they said Coffee World was there. And if I find out Sarah died of cancer or some depressing no thing. speeding happening here, I see. Sir, some patience, please. Sup. He kind of looks like a young Gary Oldman. Huh, it never occurred to me before how odd that wording was, and a young Gary Oldman. That was a separate map of the sheriff's station. That seems a bit extra, but okay. Oh! Oh! Actually! It should be just over here and to the left. Yeah, the cells! This is the room where Nightingale died the first time. He got pulled out of that door over there, kicking and screaming into a giant black cloud. Something I feel like I should mention, uh, incidentally. There was a difference. You know, Alan Wake's American Nightmare is no longer canon, I think. 
because uh, Mr. Scratch gets destroyed at the end of the game. But I feel like there was a characterization thing in there that could be important. That, well, as my good friend Ronan Drake put it, Barbara Jagger was a sledgehammer. Mr. Scratch is a scalpel. Barbara's idea of stopping Alan was to possess random objects with poltergeists so they would lift themselves into the air and throw themselves at him to just d spawn endless hordes of Taken to try and chop him to pieces, uh, ultimately leading up to just summoning a tornado made out of pure darkness and trying to crush him to death. But Scratch was very careful. He built an inescapable time loop trap. It was going to loop the same events over and over again, and the Taken were going to get stronger and more numerous every time, with no way for Alan to escape. Then all he had to do was use himself as bait to make Alan walk into it. So it is not going to be as simple as getting, you know, is not being flattened by the oncoming train. Agent? Hello. As you know, the investigation is being taken over by the federal agents. I'm a helpful visual aid. Sheriff Breaker wants us to cooperate fully. Aye, aye, ma'am. I'm being serious, Nelson. Well, Nelson is it afraid to... Okay, I just it didn't tell me what these things I've picked up are, but okay. No, that's not how I select around the inventory. Well, I guess we'll just have to figure that out later. Uh, Wait. I don't know about you folks, but I don't care for all these gruesome murders and whatnot right here in our wholesome little town. It's not what I signed up for. This for? line of work is not for the faint of heart. Faint of... Oh. Oh, they still use those 2003-ass computer monitors. That's really funny. Oh yes, I was noticing here, for sale, coffee cup mascot costume, some wear and tear, $50. Alright, enough of this nonsense. Let me just take a peek in. Oh dear, <gasps> I'm a tourist, and it appears that I'm lost in the woods. It only had a tour guide, also, bear season. I saw that at the, at the diner. Bear. That cutout. <laughs> Did somebody call for a tour guide? Oh wow, Koskala Brothers Adventure Tours. Unforgettable tour experiences at affordable prices. That's right, I'm Ilmo Koskala voted best copy roaster slash tour guide by Copy World Magazine. Of course he's finished. I'm here to give you a tour of a lifetime. But Ilmo, I've heard the government has seized and restricted access to many local nature attractions. That is true, Yanko. Many local attractions have recently become fenced off by the government. And that's why, at Koskala Brothers Adventure Tours, we say, Fuck the government! <laughs> we have bolt cutters. <laughs> oh, well, you, think you can't just say you commit crimes on the commercial! Anywhere. We'll take you anywhere. Oh my god. Hiking through the scenic Elderwood National Park. Fishing in the crystal clear waters of Bright Falls Dam. Bird watching at Majestic Mirror Peak. Ugh. A tour of a lifetime is just one phone call away. Book now to get a 9% discount on this limited edition. Oh, for God's sake! Diner coffee thermos. What is it with this town and the coffee thermoses? <laughs> Wait, they were a collectible in the first game. Maybe it, like, imprinted themselves on the psyche of everyone here. Okay, I admit it. I didn't know there were live-action video things in this game. I really should have known, because it's fucking Remedy. But, uh, that was funny. Oh, uh, sorry, I thought this door went somewhere else. This is a strange game. So we share a morgue with the funeral home next door. It's a shoestring budget. I guess you guys don't have that problem, though. Our only coroner rotates between a few other towns, and he's away this week. But you can handle this, right? I'm qualified to perform examinations. Yes. What the timer? God damn it! 
Okay, fine, 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 fine. Oh shit, it's dark as fuck down here. Well, before we go Something around this... about more. Oops. They always cheer me up. I can't say I feel the same. I feel like that was sarcasm. But it's kind of hard to tell because everything he says sounds like that. Oh, god damn it. I heard the water sounds like... Oh! Because sometimes the darkness makes watery noises because, you know, it's under the water. And no, it's just a fucking water cooler. Hmm. Oh. Because I was just rendering error for a second there. Uh, I did have new information, didn't I? Oh, yes. Booker described multiple attackers wearing deer masks, chanting, and tearing into the guy with knives. Let's try putting this on killer profile. Yes, good. We're dealing with an organized group of killers, not a lone serial killer. Oh, it's a new file for the Cult of the Tree. Huh. Background cases accumulate clues about broader, ongoing topics. Oh, that's it. The Cult of the Tree. I need to know more about the Cult of the Tree if I'm going to shut them down. Word. Ooh, ooh. Stop a cult, we need to understand them. Their ideology, their goal, their members. Right, this is going to be more involved than I expected. Uh, so I'll just do the outro then. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Alan Wake 2. I don't have anything clever to add with the next episode, so until then, have yourselves a great day, and stay in the light.